We shall now discuss a special kind of time and distance problems that pertain to trains. Why are trains so special? Trains are different because trains compared to an ordinary person walking or a car are really long. So when you are calculating time and distance problems related to trains, you have to take into account the train's length itself. Problems on trains are not very common in the IBPS but they have definitely been asked several times in the past. Since this is just an applied kind of time and distance problem, you should know this concept well so that when such a question comes you could easily solve it. Let us assume that this train has a length of LT. Let's see our first case that is a train of length LT is crossing a stationary object. That stationary object here in this case is a tree. It could also be a lamp post, a person standing or something stationary like a house. For a train to cross a stationary point, it shall have to travel a certain distance that is equal to its own length. For any other kind of vehicle, this might not be that significant. But given that trains are long, some trains can be more than half a kilometer long. In such a case, the length of the train itself becomes significant to the time and distance and speed calculations. Similarly, let's look at another case. This case is of a train of LT that is crossing a platform. Now this platform itself has a length of LT. If the entire train has to cross this platform, it would have covered a distance that is equal to its own length plus the length of a platform. Now you understand why trains change the way you calculate a time and distance problem. For an ordinary person who is walking from one end of the platform to the other or maybe a car or a bicycle, the distance travelled will still be just LP. However, since a train is so long, for a train of length LT to cross a platform LP, the total distance travelled also will go up by the length of the train itself. Trains are also interesting because they run on tracks that are parallel to each other. If there are two tracks, two trains could be crossing each other or both trains could be moving in the same direction on the same parallel tracks. In the first case right now, let us look at when two trains are going to cross each other. Here we have train A and train B which are moving on parallel tracks but in the opposite direction. Now if there is an observer in one of the trains sitting and looking at the other train, the other train appears to move faster. You would definitely have noticed this while you were in a train that you are inside a train and some other train is crossing you. You always feel that the other train is moving really fast. That is because of a concept of relative speed. In this case, Relative speed is equal to speed of train A plus speed of train B. That is, if these two trains A and B are crossing each other and you are sitting in train B, train A appears to move with a speed that is equal to speed of train A plus speed of train B to the observer that is you sitting in train B. Likewise, you could have two trains moving in parallel in the same direction. In such a case, relative velocity shall be equal to speed of train A minus speed of train B. If both the trains are moving at the same velocity and you are sitting in train B and looking out of the window and looking at train A, train A appears to be stationary. That is because both the trains are moving in parallel at the same speed. The key formulae related to the solving of problems regarding trains are the same as the formulae that we have discussed in the time and distance lecture. The formulas are the same. All you have to do is ensure that while calculating time, distance and speed problems for a train, you always have to take into account the length of the train. And also you have to remember the formulae for relative speed.